HomeKit Secure Video offers users with an iCloud Plus subscription with the ability to remotely and securely stream home security cameras to their Apple devices, whilst also securely recording clips based on motion detection. However, official HomeKit Secure Video cameras can be very pricey. Today's video is a quick tutorial for how to add HomeKit Secure Video to your existing IP cameras, meaning that you don't need to spend hundreds of pounds for each individual camera. This can be applied to any camera that has an accessible RTSP stream, like in my setup where I'm using the RTSP stream from my Swan DVR. First, let's make sure that your camera can be used. So the main requirement is that your camera's video codec is H.264. It cannot be anything else. No H.264+, no H.264 Super, and no H.265. Just plain and pure H.264. As for audio, if your camera supports it, then the audio codec needs to be AAC. Other formats can be used and transcoded within scripted, but it is recommended to use AAC for HomeKit Secure Video for optimal quality, as well as AAC being ultimately what Apple actually requests within these videos. Your camera's resolution must also be set to 1920 by 1080. Sometimes you can get away with a bit higher, like mine, which are set to 2560 by 1944. A bit of an odd number, right? But they have been working just fine for the past couple months. However, your mileage may vary. I would say that 4K most likely and most definitely will not work with HomeKit Secure Video and your recordings will end up being rejected by HomeKit. But anything closer to 1080p HD should work fine. You must set your bitrate to two megabits and use the VBR or burial bitrate option. You can try increasing your bitrate slightly above 2 megabits, but at some point HomeKit won't be happy and again it will start rejecting your recordings, or it will even try transcoding it yourself and then the footage will look a bit potato-ish. In some cases, some people have gotten up to 6 megabits working. In my experience, I've gotten around 3 to 4 megabits, which I found fairly stable. And finally, if your camera does support it, set the iframe or keyframe interval to 4 seconds. I won't be going through how to install Scripted as it's very, very simple to do now thanks to Kusha's excellent work. If you found Kusha's work super helpful and useful, I would really recommend sponsoring the project on GitHub. For more advanced configurations of setting it up, you can check out my other YouTube videos, but for most, if not all users, you can either install it on Docker as a container, or you can run it locally on your operating system of choice by using the install script on the GitHub page. So once you've installed Scripted, it's time to start installing some plugins. First and foremost, let's get our IP cameras into Scripted using the RTSP plugin. We'll then need the OpenCV motion detection plugin if your camera doesn't have a motion sensor. If you are limited in terms of your CPU performance, you can also use the PAM Difference motion detection plugin, but the OpenCV one will definitely outperform PAMDIFF. You'll notice that some plugins will automatically install any other dependent plugins. Like with OpenCV, we'll find the Video Analysis plugin gets automatically installed. If it's not already installed, we'll also need to install the Rebroadcast plugin, Dummy Switch plugin, and finally the HomeKit plugin, of course, to get our cameras actually into HomeKit. Okay, we're all set and ready to begin. Let's head into the RTSP camera plugin and click Add Camera. Let's give our camera a name and click Create. On the next page, we can then assign the camera to a particular area. The key thing we want to do here is to add our IP camera details in. So under General in the Settings area, type in the username and password for the camera. By the way, if your camera doesn't have a password, I really recommend that you do set one up, otherwise anyone could potentially access the cameras and be watching your streams. Next, let's type in the RTSP stream URL and click Save. If your camera has a second stream, like a lower resolution substream, you can click add and type it in here. I'll explain later on why this second stream will be useful for us. If your camera does not have audio or you want to mute the audio from it, click this box next to no audio. Once you've created your camera, the rebroadcast plugin is automatically enabled for it. Let's go to the streams tab and from here we can see if scripted is able to see our RTSP streams and most importantly, we can choose which ones we want to pre-buffer. What this pre-buffer plugin does is it keeps a small buffer of a set duration of the stream in memory from the camera, which can be helpful for when motion events occur and HomeKit wants to start recording them. 
it means that no footage will be missed in case your stream takes some time to start. So head over to the pre-buffer tab and make sure that the pre-buffered stream is stream one, which is going to be our most highest quality one. It isn't necessary to pre-buffer the second stream as that's only for motion detection, but I do it anyways as I do have the extra headroom on my server. Next, let's make sure that the correct streams are assigned here. Like for me, my substream is stream two, whereas the default for scripted's low resolution stream is set to one. So I'll be changing this over. It's important that we change this to a lower resolution stream as it will require much less processing power to process than the main higher resolution stream. Below this, you can see the local recording stream, but we won't be using this today as we're not setting up the scripted NVR in this video. Now let's go to extensions and enable the OpenCV motion detection plugin. Here we can set values for the motion area and motion threshold. These determine the area on the camera that is required to trigger motion. So higher values are less sensitive and mean that more motion is required to trigger this. But be sure not to set this value too low as this will trigger too many motion detections and this can cause issues for your HomeKit Home Hub. The blur radius is helpful with this by denoising any smaller events in your camera's view that could otherwise trigger the motion detection. All of these values will depend greatly on your environment, so I wouldn't copy mine. So for now, you can just leave them as is. We can set a value for motion duration, and this will determine how long the motion sensor will remain active once it's triggered. It's entirely up to you and your setup for how long you want this to be, but for mine, I've found that 10 seconds works best. Here we have a tab for zones, where you draw out particular areas of your camera's view and mark them as exclusion zones to ignore motion from. This is useful if you have an area on your stream where you often get a lot of movement, like with leaves on a tree. To create a zone, type in a name and hit enter. Hit save and then click on the zone at the top. Let's mark this as an exclusion zone and then set the zone type to contain so that it only blocks motion for objects that are completely within the zone. Now let's use the zone editor to draw out the area we want to exclude. Now that we're done setting up the camera within scripted, we're going to need to get it ready to add into HomeKit. To do this, we'll be creating a device group. I've given mine the same name as the RTSP camera. However, sometimes this can be confusing, so I would suggest that you use a naming convention that you find easy to understand for yourself. Do note that the name you give this will also be the default name that's given to it when you add it into HomeKit. Go to edit and we can change the device type to either a camera or a doorbell. Under the selected device interfaces, search for the RTSP camera we just created and choose the camera, video camera and motion sensor. If this is for a doorbell, make sure that you add the doorbell binary sensor too. Next, go to extensions and make sure you unclick the rebroadcast plugin as this is not needed because we are already using the rebroadcast plugin on the initial RTSP camera within scripted. Now let's enable the custom motion sensor and the doorbell button if it's for a doorbell. And finally enable the most important plugin for this setup, the HomeKit plugin. Go to the custom motion sensor tab and choose the camera we created earlier to be the linked motion sensor. This step is essential if you want to set up HomeKit secure video. Make sure you hit save at the bottom. All right, now we're ready to add this into HomeKit. Let's refresh the HomeKit plugin and then we'll head over onto our app. If scripted HomeKit is not discoverable within the Apple Home app, make sure multicast is enabled on your router. If HomeKit fails to pair if you're using a Docker install, ensure that host networking is being used. Once you have your cameras linked into HomeKit, if at any point in time you notice that your cameras aren't recording or your live streams time out, the first troubleshooting step I would recommend is to reboot your home hubs. This is potentially the easiest and most common fix. Beyond that, there'll be a link in the description to the GitHub page with more troubleshooting steps. And you can always join the scripted Discord server or even my own personal channel Discord server and we'll be happy to help. If you've made it this far in the video, please do drop a comment down below and please do leave a like if you found this tutorial useful or helpful. And do consider subscribing too for more smart home content. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time. Bye!